Howdy y'all, welcome to Texas 2.5. Today we are doing a 4th of July uh, hot and fast smash burger cook on our 22 and a half inch Weber kettle. But we're gonna throw a little twist on it with an accessory from our Lone Star Grills 20 by 42 offset smoker. Y'all check it out. We're gonna be traveling this year on the 4th of July uh, evening, so we're taking it easy during the day itself and I'm not doing a big smoke this year we're just gonna do some quick burgers for lunchtime and uh, I was thinking about throwing those burgers on the back side of my grill grates which a lot of guys do on YouTube and uh, I've done it before had great success with it they work pretty well um, for uh, for grilling smash burgers uh, but I got to thinking you know I've got this brand new Lone Star 20 by 42 offset uh, that has this griddle over here that you can cook smash burgers on but uh, I really don't want to wait on the firebox to come up to temp uh, I'm not sure how long that would take to get that to get that griddle hot enough to put a nice sear on smash burgers you need to be at least 500 degrees so I got to thinking based on the dimensions of that griddle which you can see is missing uh, I wonder if that would fit on my Weber grill and lo and behold here she sits on my 22 and a half inch Weber. I've got a full chimney of lump that I dumped about five minutes ago in there. Getting this griddle. It's already been well seasoned on my first cook and my seasoning video with the Lone Star. She's ready for some burgers. So uh, I'm going to run in the house. I've already uh, padded those patties out, um, which I like to do before I put them on the grill. Um, a lot of guys do their smash burgers right on the grill surface itself. And that works. I've done it that way. I have no problem with it. I prefer to pre-smash them so um, for a couple reasons that are both related to temperature. If you put, um, if you smash them on the grill, they're already heating up when you're smashing them. They're heating up real fast because like I said, with smash burgers, you want at least 500 and maybe 600 degree surface on your griddle. And as that burger warms up and you're squeezing it, um, you're pressing fat out of it and juice and flavor. Um, I prefer to press them out while they're cold and then pop them in the freezer for uh, the five or ten minutes that I'm waiting on the grill to get hot. Um, they're not, I don't freeze them, but I get them as cold as I can without freezing them so that uh, they're just ready to go right on the griddle. Um, I stack them up with some wax paper. It makes it super simple when I come out here they all cook evenly and at the same time whereas if you're smashing them one at a time it takes a good amount of time to do that well I like mine real thin and I like them uniform so I I take care whenever I'm smashing them out and if I do that over the hot grill it might take me you know 20 seconds 30 seconds per burger to do that so by the time I've put my last burger on um, I'm already like risking burning my first burger uh, and that's with only doing five or six burgers. So I like to do it this way. I like to throw them on the house, keep them cold, save as much fat and flavor as possible. Uh, I've already seasoned them up on both sides in there with uh, my first layer. I put Cosmo's um, Texas beef, that his SPG rub, uh, which has a little bit of sugar in it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that because it it's not great for a 500 degree griddle. Um, but I'm going to try... I love the rub, don't get me wrong, it's a great rub, great flavor for a smoke, it's just not uh, ideal for griddling because it has sugar in it. Um, so I'm going to try Malcolm Reed's Killer Hogs next for smash burgers, um, but putting that SPG layer down, that basic salt, pepper, garlic as my first layer, which is what um, Killer Hogs makes an SPG and also the Cosmos Texas Beef is essentially an SPG with some sugar added to it. Um, that's the first layer I do for just about all my cooks, smoking and grilling. I love, I love putting down a good basic SPG layer. And then my second layer, um, a lot of times I use Cosmo's cow cover. Today I'm using, um, it's called bootleg surf and turf seasoning. It's sort of like a cross between, uh, a normal red barbecue rub and Montreal steak. So it has some chunky, um, pepper and salt granules in it and, uh, I like it for that reason, for that texture. So that's what I'm doing today. Um, we'll be uh, getting those griddle burgers on here in just a minute. And um, yeah, stay tuned. Should be good. All right. 
less than 10 minutes after throwing that griddle over that lump charcoal, we already have uh, 550 to 650 degree surface temperature on most of that griddle. Uh, one corner of it's a little cooler because I didn't, I don't have lump underneath it. Um, but uh, basically the whole left two thirds of that thing is over 550 degrees, so it's perfect. We're gonna throw some burgers on. Here they are. They're looking good. Like I said, we got two layers of rub on them. We got five smash burgers today. I like to do about a three ounce patty, but I smash it out to about five inch diameter. Um, I get it real thin. That's the way I like it. And uh, they shrink up a bit, but um, you know, you throw two or three of them on a bun, you got yourself a good meal. Let's go check out the griddle. All right, these have been on here about 30 seconds. About 30 more seconds, I'm going to flip them because that's all it takes is about a minute to minute 15 on each side when they're this thin and the griddle is this hot. Um, I don't know why I put this one over here. That's the first one I put on the grill. Uh, I wasn't sure exactly how the spacing would look. If this one was slid over and these were all slid over a hair more, you might be able to squeeze nine of these on this thing. You might be able to get three more down this side or maybe two right here, right here, or maybe if you made a little bit smaller patties for the kids, you could get three more down this side. Um, but about seven, eight, nine patties, you could, uh, of the kind that I make, the size that I make, you could fit on this Lone Star Grills griddle. Um, the nice thing is these griddles on the 20 inch smoker series are a little bit smaller than the ones on the 24 inch. I think the griddles on the 24 inch would not fit on a Weber grill because this one is pretty close on the corners. And I think the griddle on the 24 inch model is significantly bigger. Um, but uh, I could be wrong on that. Anyhow, sorry if I'm giving you motion sickness. Should have brought my spatula out here with me the first time. Let's check these out. They've been on about 90 seconds. Oh baby, look at the sear on that. By the time I get these flipped, throw some cheese on them and count to 20, they gonna be ready. Listen to that, folks. That is some, that is some tasty goodness happening right there. We're gonna get some cheese on, and I'll show you what the finished product looks like here in just a minute. All right, y'all, I gotta make this a quick one because I don't wanna burn them. I just threw the cheese on. I told you we're going on a 4th of July trip, so we don't have much in the fridge right now. We only had one slice of American, so I'm using this Mexican cheese blend from the grocery store, shredded cheese, to finish them off. I'm gonna give them 10 seconds with the lid down, and I'm gonna show you what they look like on the plate. Folks, these smash burgers are looking legit. You know, I've never thought about doing shredded cheese before. I'm a, I'm a hardcore American cheese guy, and usually I prefer the white American cheese, uh, because what I found out at the, the, uh, the deli, some, uh, the worker the other day told me, white american cheese is white because it has a little bit of swiss mixed in with it at least a good quality white american cheese has some swiss in it and i like that uh problem is it's hard to find white american cheese at our delis you have to buy the pre-packaged stuff in the in the uh, dairy aisle which isn't as good a quality but um anyhow i've never gone with shredded cheese before on a burger but i might start doing that on these griddle burgers because i didn't think about it but what it did was Along the edges where I spilled that cheese on the griddle, it crisped that cheese up. They look like onion straws. It looks delicious. All that crispy cheese around the edge of these burgers. You have to be really careful with that because if I had let it go another 30 seconds, those would have all burned and they would taste terrible. But as it is, uh, for the most part, they're golden brown. I mean, we got a black one here, but that one, that one fell off anyways. For the most part, those cheesy strings are golden brown around the edges. And... Uh, we're going to get inside and have some lunch. Thank you all for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, not only hope the food looked good to you, but uh, I hope you enjoyed that tip about being able to use your Lone Star Grills griddle on your Weber grill and making a real quick setup instead of having to haul out your whole offset smoker to do some smash burgers. Hey, just throw you your griddle right on your Weber grill. 20 minutes, you're ready to go. Talk to you later. Okay, so I couldn't end this video without giving... Uh, some grades, uh, summary of my thoughts. Those were the best smash burgers I've ever made. 
Um, I've been working on my smash burger technique for about six months and I've been doing them on the back of my grill grates as I've said but even though they turn out good on the grill grates um, the Lone Star griddle is far superior to grill grates for this purpose um, a because it's heavier metal much heavier we're talking quarter inch steel uh, grill grates are very thin um, so it doesn't cool off as drastically whenever you throw all the cold hamburger on there and it gets an incredible crunch and sear on the outside of those burgers uh, secondly because the Lone Star grill griddle doesn't have holes in it like the grill grates if you are one of those guys who smashes your patties on the griddle um, you won't have meat sort of pressing through those holes like you might with grill grates it doesn't it it's not a dramatic problem like it's not like I was losing hamburger through the holes but it does happen and you also don't get sear on those spots because there's no uh, griddle there so with the Lone Star um, without the holes you have perfectly uniform flat smooth hamburgers and you have an even sear all the way across the burger instead of having holy spots um, that cheese putting grated cheese which I never even considered doing before on a smash burger like I said it turned into little crispy onion straws or not onion straws cheese straws I put onion straws on my burgers and I usually go with barbecue sauce because I like a Western burger bacon onion straws and this time those crunchy little cheese bits were awesome uh, again you have to be real careful and watch it close so you don't burn your cheese but um, those smash burgers were amazing um, really good so highly recommend it the LSG is such a versatile unit um, being able to use that griddle on a standard Weber 22 and a half inch kettle is phenomenal if you have the bigger 24 inch diameter LSG pits uh, I'd be curious to know if those griddles would fit on a 26 inch Weber um, and that might be worth picking one of those up because Weber's as we all know are super versatile I'd love to have one of the 26 inch ones uh, I just ain't spending the money right now after just buying a Lone Star so maybe one day I'll have one of those but for now the 22 and a half inch with the um, LSG griddle off of a 20 inch diameter smoker works perfect highly recommend it uh, give it a go talk to you soon